Welcome to Polk Unplugged, where we take county employees out from behind their desk and put them into their natural environments. I'm your host, Jeremy Morady. Today we're out at Imperial Polk Skeet and Trap with Kyle Holland. All right, we're out here today at uh, the shooting range with uh, Kyle Holland, and I uh, uh, wanted to get out here and see a little bit about what he does. But before we do, I want to talk to you a little bit about who you are, where you came from, how you got here, all that kind of good stuff. And uh, I guess kind of start us off and you know tell us a little bit about yourself and your family, where you came from. All right. I. Um Born and raised in Bartow. The, went through Bartow High School, graduated in 94. Um, went through Travis Votech, took, took a HVAC course, two year course. And uh, both my parents worked for the Board of County Commissioners. Both actually retired from the board. <clears throat> and for me, it was, you know, a solid upbringing. Um, watching my parents have, you know, you know, job security through the Board of County Commissioners and, and knew at a, probably an early age that uh, it's kind of the, the path that I had in mind and always liked to take stuff apart and put it together. So, kinda, Now what they do? My, my mother was, uh, she worked 30, I believe 35 years with the tax collector's office. Okay. And my father worked for, used to be the Pope General Hospital up until its closing and then he transitioned into facilities management uh, for I think at the time it was District 3 which took care of all of East Bartow mm -hmm. um, and then somewhere in that equation I wound up applying for a maintenance position actually I, I think I applied for a position at the courthouse at one point and uh, I was pretty young got passed up and a little bit later on I put in and, and was selected for a position at the, the Central County Jail in Bartow as a maintenance uh, mechanic. Uh, worked in that location for, I believe it was about eight years and had the opportunity to put in for a uh, maintenance foreman with District 3 and I transitioned over and went kind of out, uh, took care of the whole west side of the county basically from North Lakeland to Fort Meade mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the superintendent that I worked for at the jail he, he retired so I put in for his position and was selected and it since kind of morphed into I, I'm the superintendent of both jails for Polk County. Um, we have a lot of square footage uh, and a huge responsibility. You know, we're tasked with taking care of uh, the buildings and, and that house all the inmates. And, you know, they have all day to, to figure out how to undo things. And <laughs> it's a lot like a chess match for us. Kind of got to stay on top of that. Yep. Now, before you got over to the jail, uh, what type of stuff was it that you were doing with uh, facilities and um, keeping those things up and running? I, um, you know, I started out in, in just doing HVAC work and, you know, um, right out of tech school, I started in at Florida Southern College and I worked there for, I believe it was five years. Okay. And. So you're looking at like, what, mid 90s kind of? Um, pretty much, yeah, mid 90s. Okay. <laughs> so that was, uh, Florida Southern College was a pretty neat place. You know, it was uh, the, probably the, I think it's the largest collection of Frank Lloyd Wright buildings and mm -hmm. got to see a lot of really neat stuff there a lot of neat construction um, a real big diversity of equipment to work on as far as uh, HVAC and refrigeration goes um, and what I imagine too with the the differences in the buildings you've got some really old architecture oh, yeah. and then the more modernist stuff from certainly. Frank Lloyd Wright certainly it was uh, that, that was really neat. That was uh, 
you know, got to see a lot of things a lot of people don't get to see. Mm -hmm. um, we took, you know, once I started with uh, with the county, with the jail, that was a kind of an eye-opening experience for me that, you know, we were, when I first started at the Central County Jail, they were you know, overcrowded and had a lot of stuff going on. We actually had a tent city back then that, that housed inmates. Um, I remember those days. It was, it was definitely an experience. And, you know, the county wound up buying um, the South County Jail. And we spent a lot of time down there uh, preparing it for uh, inmates. It was, per it was originally built to house federal inmates. And our, our inmates are a little different, have a little less uh, leeway than what federal inmates do. So it's been a, a big undertaking. So now growing up in Polk County and uh, you know, seeing your, your parents' legacy and in, in working in government, and now you've done the same, um, you've also decided to you know, raise your family here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? The, uh, you know, the decision for my wife and I that, that uh, to, to continue to live here in Polk County and raise our children here is just such a diverse location. There's a lot of stuff at your disposal uh, in Polk County. You're, you know, you got the theme parks in about 45 minutes either direction, east or west, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've got Legoland here now, and you know, was Cypress Gardens. We've, uh, there's just a lot of stuff to do, a lot of ballparks. Uh, we've, you know, we went through baseball, we've been through gymnastics, got some really good gymnastics uh, gyms in Polk County. A lot of opportunities for your children. Um, you know, all in all, this just Polk County is just, it's a nice, it's still got a good home, homely feel to mm -hmm. it. Uh, and just, you know, I don't know, I'm just not cut out for, for big city living where you gotta <laughs> battle traffic. Like, you know, uh, we were in Atlanta a little while back and, you know, I don't know how people could live in it. <laughs> yeah, we just, we just came through there on uh, vacation and it, it, it's unreal and the, the differences. So I, I know what you mean there. We've, um, you know, we've since gotten into uh, the shooting sports through, actually it, it really it originated with archery and <clears throat> my son first and later my daughter and, um, you know, my, actually both of, both my children have, have shot competitive archery and have uh, competed on a national level um, in Tennessee, I'm sorry, in Louisville, Kentucky, mm -hmm. or in Kentucky, yeah, and then uh, my daughter actually next or this weekend will be competing in Worlds and be held in Orlando, so they'll have children from all over the world competing there. Wow! And you know, we've in the last probably three years we've got into uh, shotgun sports and been shooting trap and skeet and sporting clays now for, for a while. Um, I'm. I'm a pretty active parent, and if, I've, if I'm going to be here, I might as well be useful. Yeah. So <laughs> um, we've sh been shooting through 4-H. Um, Polk County has a great extension office that, you know, they're always there to, to help kids and help families out. So <clears throat> got involved with, uh, with come, you know, bringing my kids up to shoot, and uh, as things turned out, I just started getting involved and, and uh, went and got my my volunteer application uh, done, and, and as of this year, I've got my level one coaches certification. Uh, so I, I assist our head coach, Brian Gilbert, and you know, I think we put together a pretty good program. Our kids are very, very competitive. Um, so you just jumped in all the way, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> wide open. I, I don't, I try not to, to do things halfway very much, so. <laughs> and you know, I enjoy my time with my kids. Uh, the way I look at it, we've only got so much time with them. Uh, and might as well make the best of it while you can and be involved. Well, tell you what, before we get out and you know, do a little shooting here, let's go see what you do in your office. My responsibility primarily is the Central County Jail in Bartow and South County Jail in Frostproof. Um, kind of just charged with keeping up with the buildings and the maintenance and run the, the maintenance crews and scheduling work and, and whatnot. And, my title is actually uh, building superintendent. So some of the things that I'm concerned with are, you know, life safety, uh, you know, fire alarms, 
you know, fire sprinkler systems, electrical grid, uh, standby generators. <clears throat> and my crew takes care of all that stuff pretty much. We, we you know, subcontract some of the, some of the stuff out that, uh, you know, like the fire sprinkler systems and stuff, but we maintain it on a day-to-day -day basis. We have to keep up with, with you know, all the parts of the building and, and you know, somebody once said, uh, you know, nobody likes pipes and wires but maintenance guys and that's what we do. We make sure the lights come on and the doors close and the locks work and, and uh, you know, it's a pretty big responsibility in the day. The working around inmates day in and day out is a whole, uh, that's a whole different animal into itself. You know, we hire somebody in a lot of times and they struggle with trying to uh, get used to working around inmates because um, we see a lot of manipulation they are always these guys are always trying to manip manipulate you for something that they can get or try so it's it's a big learning curve a lot of times when we bring somebody in and we have to you know get them used to to, to, to that mentality of you know people are always trying to get something out of you you know typically an inmate would try to manipulate you for you know try to get a cigarette or, or some tobacco or something like that or uh, try to get you to you know to go along with them to have their girlfriend or somebody meet you on the outside and hey you know they'll you know, can you bring me in some cigarettes or something like that and it's you know everybody's got a sob story in here and <laughs> almost 20 years I don't think I've heard but like one inmate say I, I need to be here <laughs> so it's it's a different environment from you know what most you know guys that in this line of work you know going you know door to door working on houses or whatever um, you know this is a whole different environment it's just you can't really it's hard to put it in words and sum it up so the, the facility here uh, the one here in Frostproof it's you know we're housing almost 2,000 inmates in it sometimes it's a little over a little under um, kind of changes with the weather sometimes for lack of better terms um, the our facility in Bartow we're averaging around 700 plus or minus a few day to day and uh, you know when you try to keep up with something this size and you know we see a lot of vandalism you know we got inmates have all day to try to figure out how to manipulate things and change things or you know just watch and see what happens so you constantly you, you change your routine up change how you do things a little bit but um, you know, I've seen guys saw steel bars in half with dental floss and toothpaste. They just have all the time in the world to do it. So, you know, we we look at things almost day to day and, and we're looking for hazards. We're looking for, you know, was there a part uh, taken off of something? Was there a piece of a bunk broken off that could be made into a, a shank? Um, you know, and trying to get that, that kind of information reported back. Um, because you know we don't want any kind of weapons like that in a facility and you know tool control for my guys um, having to have total tool control and, and count every single piece and part in your toolbox and you know when you go into a dorm to work you count the ones that, that you take out and you count the ones that you put back just to make sure nothing gets left behind and um, you, know, you just don't want somebody to get hurt because you lost a tool or misplaced one or just lost count of it so uh, you know, we're constantly looking for hazards for where somebody could get hurt, hurt themselves, hurt somebody else, hang themselves. I mean, we see all kinds. If we have any type of a natural disaster or, or you know, we, we go what we call hurricane preparedness and we have a call down list of things that have to happen. So, you know, if we have a storm on the horizon, um, tropical storm is, you know, we start getting our email notices on, you know, what's out there and, you know, projections and time frames and stuff. Well. We have different levels that we go through a progression um, all the way up to an imminent um, hit. And then what we do is we have staff members that they come to work. So instead of staying at home with their, their wife and family, um, guys are grabbing their gear, their overnight bags are coming in and we staff the place. Uh, and we're here for emergency purposes. And sometimes, or you know, if we start getting um, a lot of power fluctuation where the power's taking a lot of hit. We'll go ahead and transfer the whole facility. 
uh, get on generator power so that we can soften up some of that because with the the high amount of electronics that we have it does not like you know power going on and off a lot so if we start seeing that as an issue we'll just put the whole facility on generator standby power and then we just you know prepare for whatever's coming we stock up on our supplies wood screws metal roofing material whatever we need we'll house it um, because at the end of the day you know whatever happens out there we you know our primary responsibility is to house inmates and make sure that the the community's safe and we do what we can so no matter what we're going to be here the lights are going to come on water's going to flow and uh, we're going to keep it together all right well we got to see what you do in the office now i want to see what you do outside of the office and um, i know you guys do competitive shooting but i really kind of want to know how you got into it um, before you, you got your children involved with it and the, the competitions and stuff like that. All right. I, um, you know, I, I was blessed in being raised a family that was always involved in things. And um, from a very early age, I was raised in the woods. We were either hunting or fishing, um, you know, always outside doing stuff, but uh, really just enjoyed the shooting sports. Uh, if it was just target practice, I just, you know, always, enjoyed it um, something that my kids have you know since they were old enough you know to to handle a gun safely you know we got into that um, now did you start off uh, growing up hunting or were you just always doing targets it, um, you know really it was hunting um, we, we just spent a lot of time if it was hunting season we were hunting if it was fishing we were fishing the other you know nine months out of the year so oh, yeah. we were when I was a kid, we stayed on the go. Um, my parents had a had an offshore fishing boat, so we were, like I said, if oh, it was nice. if it was that time of year to be fishing or lobstering or in the Bahamas or the Tortugas, we were always somewhere. <laughs> um, it so it just always kind of to kind of morphed into to outdoor sports for me. The once the kids got old enough, uh, started, starting with my son, you know, we started out simple. We started dove hunting. Um, he, he started, you know, he would dove hunt with a single shot 410, and he was always right on my hip. And, you know, we just, we had a good time. And as, uh, as fate would have it, it's just something that we just kind of grew into. I never shot competitively. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't into, you know, I when I was a kid, I just had no idea that there was shooting sports like this. Uh, for kids and so much has changed since so yeah so up. much has changed um <laughs> you know we're hoping next year that that uh if he my son he because of his age hopefully he qualifies uh high enough that he can compete in nebraska to uh, represent the state of florida uh in 4-h nationals if not then we're going to go to the uh junior world ski championship okay. in san antonio texas so that's what we're looking for for next summer sounds like a fun summer <laughs> It'll be a busy one. <laughs> it will. All right. So now, you know, you you told us a little bit on you know how you jumped into it. Uh, how have they been taking on to it and you know getting through the competitions and things like that. The kids, they they enjoy it. Um, you know, it, it's we went to a skeet camp earlier, well in June this year, and and it, it's uh we go every year for two, it's a two day camp put on and. It's a great camp with some of the best coaches around, and uh, at the end of it, they do a last man standing kind of competition, and it's kids and coaches, everybody combined, and they shoot until the last man standing. And and my son shot a perfect round. There was only one other kid that, that pulled that off, and I think two or three of the coaches that shot perfect rounds, and then they went into a, like a sudden death tiebreaker, and um, he, my son actually was still in it after two more coaches went out, and one of the coaches wound up beating him. So, you know, we, we it's, you know, this, this is a sport that's really self-motivated. It's just, you know, you're shooting against your score, really. Um, and it can be, it can just be a good time. It takes a lot of focus, um, a lot of attention to detail, safe gun handling, can't stress, stress out enough. And, and, you know, we've, uh, they've had the shooting program here 
uh, in Polk County, the 4-H shooting program, I think for 15 years they've never had an accident of any sort. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's a good program and it's, you know, we, uh, we apply for grants to get, you know, monies for shotgun shells and different things and we have some club guns so that uh, when kids come into the program that, you know, they don't have those, uh, those things that are, um, maybe they don't have the money to, to get those things. So, you know, we have the ability to provide them with a shotgun that they can shoot and shells uh, while they're here at our practices. Okay. So we don't turn, we try not to turn any kids away. Okay. Sounds wonderful. Well, for someone who is new to it, just getting into it, or wanting to get into it, what are some things that you could tell them um, that they could look for, whether they're, you know, the, the younger ages like the kids or, you know, someone our age? Um, you know, for kids, I would think the first and foremost would be to reach out to your local extension office and find out what shooting sports programs they have and what groups. Um, then, and the reason I say that is 4-H is really generated about kids and not about, you know, the other stuff. So whether they want to shoot competitively, shoot archery or shotgun, uh, they can have air rifle. Uh, there's, there's several other, you know, venues through 4-H that they can shoot. Mm -hmm. um, but that's a good place to start with kids. If, you know, for adults, you could, uh, a lot of the gun ranges have, they have rental guns that you can get. You can go and uh, rent an over-under shotgun or a semi-auto. Um, buy shells, they've even got, some of them will have some coaching available. Um, here at Imperial Polk, um, there's always a, a, a great bunch of guys here that can help out too. That you know, we have people that come up here all the time that just they hear the hear the shooting from the park next door or something, and they come over to check it out and um, find themselves you know shooting before long. So mm -hmm. it, it's there's plenty of, of uh, avenues to, to get involved, and um, you know it's just it's it's a great sport. It's it really is good bunch of people. Well. Other than the guns it, and you know, ammunition, is there anything else someone needs to know and gear to get, uh, knowledge of any types of licenses, permits, anything like that that they need to get ahead of time? Um, for shooting sports, you don't need any licenses or permits. Um, the first and foremost is eye and ear protection always. Um, can't stress that enough to, to protect yourself. You only have one set of ears and one set of eyes, so always make sure that you take care of them. The, you know, the, the, the easiest thing to do is there's plenty, there's, there's a lot of information on the internet that you can seek out and, and read on, you know, gun holds and foot position and um, there's just, there's a lot of information out there um, to help you out. And as far as, you know, guns go, you can have guns that cost, you know, as little as a couple hundred dollars, or you can have guns that cost in the, you know, the one the we saw a minute ago, tens yeah. of thousands <laughs> of dollars, so. Okay. Well, sounds wonderful. Well, now, uh, you know, we've, I, I think we've done enough talking now. Let's get out and do a little bit of shooting. Sounds good. All right, so now walk me through this, because I've never done any type of skeet shooting before. All right. And just kind of like how you do with the, the kids and your coaching. Take me through the process. All right. Well, first thing we would stress is what we call mat muzzle action trigger. Muzzle's always in a safe direction. Um, fingers always off the trigger until you're ready to shoot, and action's covered and safe. So, what uh, what we're going to do is all these stakes out here on this field have have a, a significant meaning when you're shooting here. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna start by shooting a high house. You're gonna stand in this green box and uh, if you look out and you see the, the white stake out there with the black top, that's, that's gonna be the flight path. So you know the, the flight path of the bird. Now all we gotta do is figure out the elevation. Uh, when you get ready, we'll, we'll, we'll put a shell in, we'll put it in the bottom barrel mm -hmm. and uh, we'll get into your gun stance and your mount and, and Get your elevation set. When you call for the bird, I'll I'll throw it, and you're just gonna you know try to on this house here. You're just gonna want to try to shoot just underneath it. So you're gonna want to maintain uh, visual of it, mm -hmm. but just try to shoot the bottom of it and, okay. and 
should work out for you just right. Once, uh, once we've got that, we'll load another shell in. We'll catch one coming from the low house. Uh, low house is going to be, you see where it starts, you're just going to follow it along. So it's going to come along like and that. And gets up in this area over here. Um, just put a little lead on it, not much, and uh, probably a foot and a half. Okay. And break the bird. All right. We'll go from there. Sounds good. Well, let's try it out. All right. Red, white, and blue. <laughs> American colors. Nice. All right, so any reason why you put it in the bottom? It just, um, for recoil purposes, it's, it, uh, it seems when you shoot the bottom barrel first, the gun stays on point a little better for your for a follow-up shot. Okay. Just close her up. All right. So now it's ready to go? It's ready to go. <clears throat> like I said, we're going to the white stake out there with the black on it. Now yep. we're going to elevate. Okay, when you call for it, I'll throw it. So now am I going to really have to move it along? Or? When you see it, dude, you'll have to, it's going to be moving pretty quick. All right. Am I in a right stance? Not bad at all. All right. Let's try it. Pull. Try to get underneath it. All right. Uh, this way. Oop. <laughs> it's all right. Sorry about that. Same one or? Yeah, we'll do the same one. All right. Pull. Hmm. Try a little quicker. All right. <laughs> That's good. Pull. Don't aim at it. Look at it, both eyes open. Mm -hmm. And just, like I said, you just want to see it over the top of the gun. But try to break it before it gets past that greenhouse. Before it gets past this? Yep. Oh, okay. Pull. There you go. All right. <laughs> that makes a difference. Let's look at a low house now. All right. Now you said lead it by about a foot and a half. Yep, but you're going to want to break it once it gets this side of the greenhouse. You're going to pick it up right at this window and track it. Okay. Pull. There you go. Easy peasy, right? I like that one. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> Why haven't I done this earlier? <laughs> oh, it gets tougher. Oh, I'm sure. Now we're going to see a pair. Oh, great. <laughs> Is it going to be first one high? High and then low. And then low. So they're going to come at the same time. All right. Pull. Ah. Got first one. Second yeah. one was lost. Cool. I'm a lefty. Pull. Take my option. Pull. 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 Hey. <laughs> if that ain't beginner's luck, I, I don't told you, I like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, that about does it for this edition of Polk Unplugged. Make sure to tune in next month because you never know where we're going to end up next.